Praise the Lord. We thank God for such an opportunity. Amen. It is just by the grace of God that we are all here. There are many people who did not have this kind of opportunity. So every day in the presence of the Lord is a celebration. Amen. I would like you to put your hands on your chest and let's sing this song. We've come to draw, draw, draw from you again, yeah, yeah, Lord, I've come to draw, draw, sing it from your heart, As a seed falls onto it, it shall germinate and grow. Father, we pray that you speak to us. Father, speak to our heart. Father, speak to our mind. Father, speak to our spirit and speak to our soul. I pray that every word that will come out from my mouth shall not come from my flesh, O oh Lord. I pray that you speak through me and use this pulpit to bless your children. I thank you in Jesus' name I pray. Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. We start from the vein. But before we start the vein, principles of life. That is the theme of the same one, principles of life. The life in that team is not the normal life that we have. The life in that team is the life of Christ. Amen. So if I talk about, you hear me repeating the word life, life. It's not the normal life we are living. Paul said that this life that I live, it is not me who lives, but it is Christ who lives in us. There is something that I've been trying to understand from the point of scriptures. And I've learned a lot from it. That we know that God revealed himself to us through his word. And the more you delve deeper into the word the more you find it I will not say confused but the more you find it like important to delve deeper the kind of God that we are worshipping you cannot understand God you cannot completely understand God the day that you completely understand God is the day he will cease to be God. Is the day he will cease to be God. And in this passage, I found something interesting about the life of John the Baptist in connection with the life of Christ. I mean the birth 
of John the Baptist and the birth of Christ before we come to our normal conversation. John the Baptist's mother, Elizabeth, had the trouble or difficulty in giving birth. He waited for a long period of time. And the Bible says that Mary was a very young lady. That the angel Gabriel appeared unto Mary. And it was in that passage or the news that the angel broke to Mary. That was when we got to understand that Elizabeth was pregnant for six months. That means that God put an embargo on the productivity of Elizabeth for the sake of Christ. That means it wasn't the time for Elizabeth to give birth because God has prepared her to give birth to a son that will prepare the way for the son that Mary will be giving birth to. Elizabeth had his age far, far, far before Mary. But then, the older woman womb was seized to produce just because a certain younger woman is coming to give birth to the Messiah of the world. The Bible says that when the Lord revealed this to Mary, Mary was very happy and he wanted to confirm this word, so he went to Elizabeth. The Bible says that when Mary got to Elizabeth, John the Baptist was just six months old. The Bible says that when Mary saw Elizabeth, the baby in the womb of Elizabeth shook himself, confirming the word that he has seen the one that he had to prepare the way for. John the Baptist, who had no thinking abilities, who was just a baby in the stomach of his mother, had faith in Christ because he has seen the one that he professed that is greater than. The Bible says that when Elizabeth gave birth, the Lord gave some restrictions to John the Baptist. The food that he should eat. And the Bible says that John the Baptist had to separate himself from the world. He lived in the wilderness in order to carry out the mandate of what the Lord has given to him effectively. Now, John the Baptist grew up, started whatever mandate that the Lord has given him. It got to a time because of his preaching, because of his evangelism, because he was calling people to repentance. The king at that time imprisoned John the Baptist. The Bible says that he cut his head off. And before John the Baptist was beheaded, the Bible says that John the Baptist sent some people who went to visit John the Baptist to ask Christ that is he the one who that the promises of God is saying that will be coming or that person is here to come. This is the man that who saw Christ in his mother's womb was jumping here and there. And today is the same man who was asking with a doubt thinking. There's one thing that I learned from this before we go on to our word. That there are so many times we come before Christ with our reasoning and logic. John the Baptist saw that when he grew up and had the brain or the mind to reason, to proceed with thinking, the intelligence that he had, he compared or mirrored it with the situation 
that was happening around him because he cannot understand why he is preparing a way for a messiah that he has been imprisoned and the messiah had not even visited him that is what bitterness can lead some christians to the bible said that jesus sent those who came to him jesus did not answer them directly but he said that go and tell him that the eyes of the blind have been opened the crippled are walking the deaf are hearing praise the lord because john the baptist was using his own smartness the wisdom of the world to interpret the circumstances around him he fell short to the intelligence of the realms of the spirit any moment that we come to church with this worldly scientific reasoning with this worldly wisdom we won't receive anything from God because the ways of God is not the ways of men. Whoever comes before Christ with his own thinking and looking forward that the Lord will do something in his own way, the Lord will perform something in his own way, expecting the Lord to come from a certain angle will miss it because the ways of the Lord is not your ways. The Bible says that as the mountains, sorry, as the heavens is higher above, so is the wisdom of God. The Bible says that even the foolishness of the Lord is wisdom unto men. So as John the Baptist used his own wisdom, his own intelligence, trying to understand the situation, and judge the situation made a mistake and harbored some bitterness within him you cannot approach God with your logic and with your reasoning the revelation of God comes with the point of the blood when John the Baptist saw Jesus who was just a clot in his mother's womb he had faith in god he had faith in christ because at that time when he was in the womb of his mother he couldn't reason he couldn't think but when he became when he was added flesh onto his body when he became a full human grown and started thinking that was when he missed it sometimes we hear the word of God from the pulpit that the Lord is speaking to us then we start criticizing the word of God because that word comes to meet a certain situations in our life let's go to Luke chapter 9 verse 10 Luke chapter 9 verse 10 The Bible says that after John the Baptist was beheaded, those who went to bury John the Baptist, and Jesus Christ also sent some couple of disciples to go and preach his word. The Bible says that they all went, and when they all came, they came to Christ. Please, can somebody read verse 9? Sorry, verse 10 for me. Verse 10. They returned, told him all that they had done, and he took them and went aside privately into the belonging to the city called Bethesda. Please, which version are you reading from? King James. Okay. Can you repeat it for us? And the apostles, when they were returned, told him all that they had done. 
and he took them and went aside privately into a desert place belonging to the city called Bethsaida. Verse 11. Verse 11. They knew it, followed him, and received them, and spoke unto them of the kingdom of God, and healed them with and heal them that had need of healing. The Bible says that when the mourners or those who went to buy buried John the Baptist and those who went for evangelism, they all came and other guys also followed them. The Bible says that when the Jesus saw the multitude, he withdrew and went to the wilderness privately. That leaders when sometimes we have to crowd and seek the face of God for supernatural replenishment. Act of people approaching Christ for their own reason. Praise God. The Bible says that in Christ received them. That is the one character of a Christian that every Christian had to receive anyone every christian should have the ability to receive everybody regardless their background regardless the culture that they have we need to have the capacity to receive everyone hallelujah god always put people in a private place for a certain reason and there are so many people's destiny have been killed. People's destiny have been thwarted because when the Lord sent them into a private place, they couldn't stay to wait for God, but they just revealed themselves prematurely. Hallelujah. Whoever that God wants to give a special assignment, the Lord send you into a private place, prepares you give you a certain grace helps you to prepare for the dimension that he wants to send you the lord sent david to the wilderness to learn how to fight with dangerous animals so that he will gain the skills and the abilities to fight goliath the lord sent joseph to a foreign land to learn the leadership skills because he was younger he couldn't have been a leader in his father's house so the lord has to send him to a foreign land in order to gain that leadership skills so that he can help his family and his country do not thwart your destiny when you realize that the lord has sent you into a private arena one thing that you know or get to understand one sign that the lord shows you when he's sending you to a private arena or a private place is people start to run away from you for no reason when it comes to a point of in your life when you realize that people are moving away from you those that you believed will stick to you and this would have been start to run away just remember that the Lord is about to prepare you for another dimension. One principle in life that I found is that in Christianity, dimension. In our normal life, if you want to move faster, you have to run faster. But in our life as Christians, if you want to move faster you have to wait it doesn't make sense to the presence of god with our own intelligence and thinking whoever comes before christ with his own reasoning whatever i'm saying now foolishness unto the person because i want to go far why should I wait?
in this Christian life, those who go higher and higher are those who delve deeper into the ground. Are those who delve deeper into the ground. So how deep into the earth shows how higher you move in realms. 